So is it going to be financially difficult to, let's say, get an app or download an app which might have a subscription service attached to it? So that's the first question that I might have. And the second question is, then this is something that I run into every day. A lot of my patients are older. Some of my patients live on farms a couple of hours, three, four hours away from Dallas um, in a relatively rural area, uh, east or west of us uh, in North Texas. And, uh, you know, those people may not necessarily have access to broadband. Uh, they may not have access to high-speed internet. Uh, so they may not be able to get online or if they do get online, the connections are not the most perfect. So it's always the video is not very good or they frankly may not know how to operate. They don't, just don't feel comfortable operating uh, these devices or the smart uh, tablets or phones, um, even though they might use them for making calls and texting, but they may not necessarily be um, very conversant with them or very at ease with them. So are those options really difficult for our patients to use? Yeah, so you've mentioned three really key areas, cost, connectivity, and what I will call digital literacy or digital familiarity. Those are really three key areas that we need to address for anyone who wants to use these tools to be able to use them. So cost is the first thing. Um, most mobile apps are fairly inexpensive, right? If you've downloaded anything from the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, almost everything is free. Or a few things might have, you know, $2.99, $8.99. Some of them do have subscription fees. Um, so the app itself is probably the least expensive part of it. The more expensive part is, do you have a modern smartphone that can actually, where you can download that app? Or do you have a modern tablet or a newer, um, you know, uh, laptop that can actually use apps, right? Not just software, but apps. Those devices is where the cost really comes in. And you know, if you've got any kind of device, it's every couple of years you have to replace it or upgrade it, right? To kind of keep it up to date. So that is definitely a barrier, the cost of the computing device or the remote patient monitoring device. Um, and that is where we really need to collaborate in the industry with our hospital systems and our provider systems with our um, legislative representatives, with our insurance companies to provide uh, low cost access to the devices that we need. Um, the third thing is connectivity, which is both cost and it, it is a cost um, as well as an accessibility issue. And for most of the uses in healthcare, as you've mentioned, we need, able, we need to be able to do video. Um, we need to be able to connect the devices for data. And that means we either have to have a cell phone data plan, a mobile data plan, right? That can run data on your phone or your tablet, or you need a broadband connection in your home, right? An actual Wi-Fi plan that comes into the home. So you need one or the other. And again, those, either of those options are quite expensive. If you do video visits, you know, it's, it can really eat up your bandwidth if you're on a sort of low bandwidth low bandwidth plan or you're paying for the minute or by the, you know, by, by the bit, um, it's, it can become very expensive. So we have to have a, a cost effective plan available to people. And again, there's lots of um, policies or proposals being submitted both at the state level and there are federal programs that are actually now subsidizing these things. So specifically under COVID, um, uh, provider organizations can apply to the to the federal government for special funds to offer um, uh, telehealth help to patients. So many providers have you know bought um, uh, tablets or um, or other remote patient monitoring devices or things like that that can they can give out to patients. Which brings us to the third thing that you mentioned, which is data uh, digital familiarity or di digital literacy. We have to help people learn how to use these. So even if you use a cell phone, it's different using a smartphone, right? The apps are different. The navigation is different. How you touch your screen is different. Um, how these applications actually work and um, how to get the data from your own device to a provider, to your doctor, is a whole nother set of skills, right? Do you have to pair these devices, right? Do you have to register an account? and have a password? Do you have to approve your doctor to get access? There's all these questions about how you would actually do all this. And this is where, you know, um, 
organizations like Patient, patient Empowered Network that I know does a lot of um, effort to help patients learn how to use technology, as well as the research that we've been doing at, um, at UC Davis in the community about how to support patients overcome all these barriers becomes really critical. We have to actually work together to make sure all three of these issues are addressed so that everybody can have access to 